the more I shoot these combination guns, the more I like them. I was looking for one made by Heim for a while, and I was lucky, and an outfit by the name of Enter Surplus had one. So, yeah, Heim, uh, you may not know about the chambering. It's 5.6 by 50R Magnum. It's not a very common round on this side of the Atlantic, uh, fairly common in Germany. It's, it's a fast round, I'll show it to you. So what do we have here? It's RWS 5.6 by 50R Magnum. And the ballistics are very handy here. They're on the flap. So it's 3,280 feet per second muzzle velocity with a 55 grain pointed soft point bullet. And here's the cartridge. And here's the 16 gauge that goes above. And for comparison, here's a seven millimeter Remington Magnum. And if you're wondering what this little tool is, it's really cool. I, whoops, I use it for picking up stuff. I don't know what you call that thing, but it's pretty good. Anyway, um, I was just shooting this combination gun and there's nothing really that can match the versatility. No wonder people like them. I'll show you how this rifle uh, or combination gun works. It's a little bit different from what you'd expect. So we open the action. You're all familiar with that. Then we, well, I'll do it with no, no ammo. Then you close the action and of course you've got a kind of a switch here, but you'll notice that there's no dry firing. It's not an automatic safety. So at first you're a little bit puzzled um, I knew these before, but people were writing me. Well, only a couple of people. Anyway, here's how it works. You just push forward on the trigger. Now it's cocked. So you're cocking the action with the trigger, kind of like a hammer, I suppose. And this determines which barrel. This is a barrel selector button. So this would be the rifle on the bottom, and this would be the shotgun on the top. And dry firing causes no damage. So we open the action again. And I just brought whatever it is, Federal um, seven and a halfs, mainly because it's hunting season and we might run into some grouse. But we've got some targets down there and it's effortless to hit. This one came with a claw mounted Zeiss Diatel Z six by 42. Just an incredibly bright scope. So why don't we just close her up, put the barrel selector on the right barrel. So action is cocked, safety's off. And um, no ejector, which doesn't bother me. Cock the action again. And, oh yeah, we can shoot here all day long. Uh, people ask, but what, what is it in minutes of angle? So it seems to be about an inch at 100 yards or 100 meters. And the shotgun, should we shoot that? I don't know, we're not shooting anything, but uh, we can do that. So then you would change the barrel selector up. Very simple. And... That would be a grouse or whatever. So pretty, pretty good um, firearm to own. And if you decide you're fed up with the scope, just pull back and up. And you've got some decent iron sights. And actually it looks like it's set up for slugs because I noticed somebody put some fingernail polish or lipstick or something and on the rear sight, you know, for visibility, right? I've seen tons of things, I'm sure you have too. And then you just pivot it down. That looks to me like a slug sight, uh, but I didn't bring any, yeah, that's a slug sight. I didn't bring any 16 gauge slugs, uh, just, and it's ideal. I hope we run into something on the way out of the mountains, uh, but we'll see, we're ready for anything. If a deer happens to appear, no problem. 
but more likely than not it'll be a grouse. All right, well, I hope you find these interesting. They're so undervalued, it's actually incredible. And this one is very light because the action is made out of aluminum, uh, which doesn't bother me at all. They've figured out how to handle all the pressure and so on. So that's it. And people may ask me what model number, and I really sometimes don't study that. Yeah, it doesn't say. It's just Heim. I'm sure there is a model number somewhere on here made in West Germany. So that tells you goes back in time. But I doubt that anyone really used this much. And I was saved by the barrel. So it says Model 22A, Friedrich Wilhelm Heim in Munerstadt, Germany. Uh, yep, so Friedrich, probably not with us anymore, but he did a great job in his company. Uh, oh yeah, we never miss with the iron sights either. They're excellent. I, in fact, I'll take a shot with the iron sight. And I like the round a lot because there's no really there's no recoil. And we switch to the rifle, cock the action. And in some ways, the um, the iron sights are better than the scope. You don't have to think as much. Anyway, here I am again. So we went out shooting that one time with the Heim. And then a few days passed and then there was an opportunity to go back into the mountains and shoot some more. So I thought I better, uh, well, first of all, that second batch of shooting, uh, what a remarkable firearm this Heim is, but I forgot to show you a few things. So I'll do that right now. Maybe I'll start with the cartridge, uh, just because on the first part of the video, or however they arrange it, it's not too visible. So that's this cartridge here. That's the 5.6 by 50R Magnum. That's this cartridge here. So you can see, uh, this is RWS ammo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unbelievably good ammo, by the way. Some people say the best. Uh, I put a 223 next door, so you can see the 223 is just shorter and of course this has a rim which you can see at the bottom so it's just an adventure in more powder for higher velocity and then since i was gluing cartridges to glass i thought i'd toss in a 220 swift a 5.6 by 57 and a 7 by 57 this is the parent case for this and these are slower, sort of 33, 3400 feet per second. These are the big boys for 22 speed. So we're talking 4,000. I think when I had a chronograph, this was the fastest of the whole bunch. 220 Swift can be screaming fast. Of course, it depends on bullet weight and so on. And then on the end of this, I put 223 WSSM. Everybody or most people have forgotten about this. A family of cartridges. Anyway, that gives you an idea of what's what. So that's the cartridge. Fantastic performer, under minute of angle in this um, Heim. And just quickly, because people <clears throat> will ask, so to reiterate, we break the action, that's easy to understand. Then to cock the action, we close, so you imagine we're, we're locked now. And then you push this forward, now we're cocked and locked, and then uh, can fire, of course. This would be the upper barrel. This is the barrel selector, kind of like the Savage. I don't know if you remember the Savage combination gun. There was one generation or more of them. You just, you, you pick the barrel. Uh, very easy, it also simplifies the mechanism inside. So, yeah, we check that it's not loaded. Close her up and then we can fire. And just theoretically, I was checking. So if we do this and then go like this, that's easy to understand. Um, I think in the video, the original, I said it's kind of like a hammer and it is kind of like a hammer. And you can even, if you hold on to it, um, uncock it. You can see what I did here. I, I just hang on to it and let it down slowly. And it's, it seems to work. 
anyway, um, you know, one has to trust what you know firsthand. So if you own one of these, test everything and check that yours works the same as this one. And then the other thing I'll show you quickly is um, probably hard to film, maybe impossible, but this is an aluminum alloy. So the firing pins are bushed. That means that there's a steel insert into the frame. I don't know, I'll put it closer. That's what I'm trying to talk about is this piece right in there. See those two black pieces? So th these bush firing pin, this idea, it, it's uh, not unique to this Heim. It's in many shotguns even. And you can see two holes in the face of the bushing. Uh, you need a special wrench, kind of like, I don't know if what you call it, maybe spanner wrench, but I could be wrong. And you can turn those out. So why to do that? Because um, there's always some gas cutting around the edge of a primer on ignition. And it would cut into the aluminum and it even cuts into steel. So a bush firing pin is a nice feature on uh, any firearm. Actually, when I was... Um, more selective with guns, I would always look for a bush firing pin because I thought, well, that's a good feature, a smart feature. But in the meantime, I've learned that you can shoot for a long, long time uh, and not have really significant damage in the face of the action. But there it is, and um, you've seen it every which way, uh, but this gives you a good look at it close up Unlike when we're in the mountains where you can't really see what's what and the, the work on the rib is excellent. These are the claw mounts. That's the rear sight with fingernail polish. And um, I just left it on because it probably works as well for me as the original owner. And then if you decide to go to the claw scope, just line up the claw and click it in place. Still. One of the most convenient ways um, to uh, anchor a scope to a, a rifle. So that's that. And uh, we did have some luck with grouse after all. It was pretty good. Anyway, I hope you find that interesting. It's definitely a unique piece and far more versatile than most guns that you can own. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll do more on those cartridges. People have written me for a long time about uh, you know, very high velocity cartridges, which has always interested me, as you know. And these are some of the fastest. That 5.6 by 57 is screaming hot and almost nobody, um, well, knows about it or owns one. But the, the, it's something to own. Anyway, take care till next time.